just 12 companies are responsible for almost two-thirds of branded litter left on Britain's beaches. It's amazing, that fact, isn't it? It's according to marine conservation group Surfers Against Sewage, who have done a big audit uh, and a nationwide litter pick, mm. and they want to name and shame the companies whose products are found most frequently. But is it the company's fault just because people drop their litter? Let's go to Pip Thompson who is in the seaside resort of Perranporth in Cornwall. Beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Morning, Pip. Listen to those seagulls. Good morning. I was about to say morning from a very cloudy Cornwall and literally, just as you've come to me, the sun has arrived. I think you'll agree, Richard, it's almost as beautiful as a Californian beach. Just take a look at this scene behind Much me. Much nicer. Uh, and it's looking very, very clean. There are a few... <laughs> There are a few dog walkers out and about, so I think I hope they've got the poo bags on them. But what we've also got is all these volunteers. These are just a tiny fraction of the 50,000 volunteers from Surfers Against Sewage, who this year have covered 350,000 miles helping to keep our beaches and other areas clean. And it is quite a job. Uh, there is some litter on the floor this morning. This is just to give you an example of the sort of litter they are collecting because 65% of what's collected can be traced back to 12 companies in particular. What's been named the Dirty Dozen? Let me just uh, show you in this graphic who they include products by soft drink makers coca-cola and pepsico the beer makers behind budweiser corona and stella artois fast food chain mcdonald's and packaging from mondelez or mondelez the makers of chocolate and sweets now that is why the situation is just gets worse and worse possibly because of lockdown over the last year when pubs and restaurants were shut more people were coming out and drinking and dumping their litter just this morning within the last hour as i was walking onto the beach i took some photos of my on my phone i think we can show you sorry if the quality is not great because i filmed it but we took these i took these pictures of a stream and you can see the amount of litter in there as well. Uh, Single-use face masks, but also plastic and aluminium cans and cartons. So this is why there's these calls to get tough on the companies through what's called uh, extended producer responsibility to make them focus on the quality of their packaging, making it more, uh, more making it more recyclable, recyclable, and also the deposit return scheme, uh, and that is to get people to yes pay a bit of extra for their for their drink, but then take it to a t designated spot to deposit of it. It really is going to take a concerted effort, I think, to make. Uh, areas like this as beautiful as what we see this morning, guys. Is that someone riding a horse in the background on the beach? I don't that, know. That I that was? that. That's the sort of thing you normally see in like a music good. video. Can we get a shot of that? Look at wow. that. Wow. Look at that. Isn't... Take, take that, take that. I'm just rehearsing behind me at the other end of the beach. Wow, it all happens in Perrinpoth, doesn't it? Hang on, Pip, what, tell, tell, what, say that again, Pip. Take that or rehearsing... Oh, yeah, I see you making jokes. I said it's like a music video. Richard! I actually, I, I'm very bad at taking jokes literally, it turns out. <laughs> Pip, thank you very much. Well, look, let's talk um, about the litter, which was yeah. mercifully absent uh, in those scenes, wasn't it? But is a huge, huge problem. Is it time to take action against the companies that make the most litter? Uh, we're now joined by Martin Kirsch of the Food Service Packaging Association, who says it's consumers who should take responsibility for dropping litter. And I think you just caught a glimpse of him there mm. as our camera sorted itself out. Hugo Tagon from Surface Against Sewage, who says firms should, without doubt, be taxed to make them responsible for the waste they're creating. So I think uh, let's you... go, should we talk to Hugo yeah. first of all as he's there? Uh, Hugo, why is it the company's fault if people can't be bothered to put their letter in a bin. Well, good morning, um, and uh, thanks for having us on today. And we really believe that it's time for systems change. Um, we can't now just claim this is a littering issue. This is a systems issue. We need new systems that can contain and control the plastic and other packaging pollution that we see on beautiful beaches like Perrinport and right around the country. And the public supports this. They want to see new systems that can in increase recycling rates and make sure that we're protecting these spaces that everyone loves. Does some of that litter end up in the sea? And if so, what's the consequence for, um, for life and marine life if that happens and when that happens? Well, 
Well, absolutely. We saw um, the shots earlier from the stream that runs down onto the beach here, the plastic bottles, the confectionery wrappers, the aluminium cans, and that can get into the sea. 12 million tonnes every year gets into our oceans, and that causes havoc for marine life. Um, it's ingested by fish and other animals. 100,000 marine mammals die every year. A million seabirds die because of plastic pollution, all right. types of plastic pollution that gets into our sea. So it's important we take action now. And it's not just about anti litter campaigns. We don't need 1980s public information campaigns. We need systems reform now, 21st century solutions to create a circular economy, give the manufacturers the sorts of materials they need to make the products they make and okay. trap that plastic and other packaging in the economy and not on our beaches. So Martin, let's just go to you there. I think we actually saw some footage of Brighton a moment ago. A couple of weeks ago they picked up 31 tonnes of rubbish from the beach in a single weekend. Um... If this litter, 12 companies are responsible for 65% of it, and it's Coca-Cola, and it's McDonald's, and it's Stella Artois, why shouldn't we put pressure on those companies to either have deposit schemes or recycle more or change the nature of their packaging? Why not? Well, first of all, I've got to congratulate uh, Hugo and Surface Against Sewage for organising 50,000 volunteers. It's been a brilliant campaign organized superbly. I think we both agree that litter is disgusting, and I'm sure your viewers also consider litter to be disgusting. What they may not realize is that, liver, that litter is a criminal activity, one which is rarely punished. So when you say, why not fine, why not charge, these major brands, yeah. what you're saying is they should be subsidizing criminal activity. If think back to the Euros, think back to those dreadful scenes afterwards that we saw in central London and in Wembley. What you're in fact saying is that those drinks brands, and it was mainly drinks brands, were responsible for the actions of those people who dropped the litter. There, but there are plenty of examples of where we incentivise companies or, or we tax companies in ways that will discourage consumers from doing things that they should not do or that are illegal. That precedent does exist, doesn't it? It's not like a mad idea. And actually, no. what if we all work together, so we all get better at not dropping litter. You've got organisations that, uh, like uh, Surfers Against Sewage, picking up litter, but also, can we also just put more pressure, given that it is... 12 companies that are, that are indirectly responsible for the majority of this. We, why well, not? The majority of litter found on the, in Hugo's survey, of course. We've also got to think about the litter on land. And I would agree with you. I mean, we do need systems changes. And we wholeheartedly support a lot of what the government is doing with regard to packaging, extended producer responsibility, and to a certain extent with the deposit return system. But what we find very difficult to take on board is that business will be paying for the activities of those who litter. And in none of these reports is there ever a reference to the individuals who dropped litter. The, that whole thing did not appear in any of the government consultations. It doesn't appear in any, one, any report. Every single report says, no, it's down to the brands. Right. They're the people who have created the litter. I know, but and you can't, I mean, the idea that you go and tell the police to sort of go and kind of pick up everybody or go and arrest everybody or charge everybody or fine everybody who drops a can of Stella on the beach is never going to happen. That's just not realistic. So we have to find a different route to doing something about this problem. I mean, what is the simplest thing, what? Hugo, the top-line simplest thing that the government could get a company to do that would reduce this problem, do you believe? Well, look, absolutely. We need to provide hope and solutions to people. Of course, uh, business as usual isn't working for the environment. We're seeing more and more plastic produced over the next 20 years. Um, we're expected to see a doubling in plastic uh, production from all of these manufacturers. And our systems just aren't keeping pace with that. The bins on our beaches, the bins in our parks, the bins on our city streets are remaining the same. So we need full change. This isn't just about littering. This is about full systems change, behaviour change with the companies and with individuals. But we need to 
incentivize people and motivate people to do the right thing. And a deposit return scheme, an all-inclusive one that includes glass, aluminium and plastic, all sizes of bottles, is a proven mechanism to do that. Typically, it will collect more than 90% of the drinks containers that it's designed to collect. Here, we just collect 50%, just over 50%, and that's not good enough. And that's why we find bottles like this on beaches like Perrinport. And the public will do the right thing with the right systems. I've walked past bins today and over the past week they're overflowing with drinks containers, taking up space for waste that we can't recycle. So we need to trap that material in the economy. We're in, a, we're in a, a, an ecological emergency. We can't be treating this, this sort of uh, material as something we can just bury in the ground and dump elsewhere. We need to really create a circular economy now and the public will play their part. They support a deposit return scheme. We delivered 300,000 signatures to Downing Street. We need to see that happen faster. In Scotland it's happening next year. We need to match that. We're delaying till 2024 at the moment. That's not good enough. We should be taking faster action in this decade of ecological uh, action. Goodness. I don't dispute I... that we need to take oh, we have action to move on, I think. whatsoever. We have to move on, but thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's just uh, read out this statement. We contacted all 12 companies to see if, if they wanted to take part in the debate, and they all declined, but two did give us statements. Coca-Cola said we're continuing to work with numerous organisations to encourage more recycling on the go, and we're active, actively supporting a number of initiatives as well. And Heineken said that we are taking important steps to help combat the problem of litter. For example, we have eradicated plastic packaging for consumers with the introduction of the recyclable and compostable green grip, which negates the need for plastic rings on can packs. Well, they're making it clear, aren't they? Clear. They're making it clear.